I would love to start a little bit earlier because Thursday presentation is going to be very, very important. Very important. And it will be an um, autoimmune disease. So it's going to open up your eyes to practically almost every disease. Because autoimmune disease looks at the underlying cause of practically every disease, which is inflammation. So you don't want to miss it. If you have friends and family members, invite them. Invite them out. Now, turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 10, reading from verse 46. Mark chapter 10, from verse 46. And it reads, And they came, are we all there? Yes. Yes. And, they, and they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bart, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he, had, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he called thee. And he cast in off his garment, rose, and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Amen. Now, the writings of the Lady White says, Bartimaeus have always wanted to meet Jesus, but never had the opportunity to. He heard so many stories. And he wanted the opportunity, but never got the chance. But he sat there begging one day, and he heard some commotion, and he asked, who is it? They told him, and he said, not this time, not passing. And he cried out. If you're in a desperate position, cry out. Amen. To be sick is a desperate position. You can manage your disease, but eventually your disease will kill you. If you don't get over it. If we don't overcome sin, what is going to happen? Sin is going to overcome us. If you don't, you might. And we must thank God for His goodness and His mercy. You might make it into the kingdom of heaven, even after you've been diseased in your body. However, you would have rubbed to an extent, humanity and God of a great service. But God in His mercy still saved you. Amen. So Bartimaeus cried out for help. And you notice the people said, shut up. Or he cried the more. So when people tell you that there is no cure, cry the more to God. Amen. And the same people who told him to shut up is the same people God have a funny sense of humor. It's the same people God used to tell him to call him. <laughs> they told him shut up and God said, you go call him. Because I'm going to bless him. And he received this blessing. But notice before he could receive his blessing, he did one thing which is very important. The scripture says that he took off his garment. His garment. Because he was going to receive another garment. And another garment he was going to receive is the blessing that Christ was going to pronounce upon him. So in order, what this, what am I saying? There are many men and women there who could see, but couldn't see Christ for who he really was. And Bartimaeus was blind, but saw Christ for who he was. Took off his garment and received the garment that Christ desired to have. Amen. Now you come here night after night, and you hear and you see, 
But are you still holding on to your garment? Your way of thinking, your way, your way that, okay, the only way, I, I'm going to stand my medication. Don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying you should come off your medication. I'm trying to make a point. I'm going to just do the conventional way that we are used to. They say that if I have high cholesterol, it cannot be cured. I have to live on my medication, which I have showed you in the presentation that high cholesterol is the easiest thing to get rid of. Stop eating meat. That's the first step. Because cholesterol only comes from? <laughs> and you live and make it as well. So when you have high cholesterol, it's because of what you're putting in, and it's messing up your own body, so it's overproducing. Plus the surplus that you're putting in. So educate yourself and take off the garment that you have, because it's no good. Remember, that's what Revelation says. Think you're rich, but you're poor. Think you can see, but you're blind. Think you're clothed. Can make it. So let us make some paradigm shift. Tonight we're going to look at what I call the MAPE protocol. And what this is all about, the MAPE protocol is a natural system, system, systematic process that deals with the root cause of your illness, the root cause, and help you banish the symptoms as you implement the power of functional nutrition and lifestyle changes. Functional nutrition meaning foods that have nutrients that can get rid of disease. Remember I showed you before, scurvy used to kill many people. And the functional nutrient that they used was vitamin C. So that's basically what it is. Nutrients can heal the body. Because that's how God made it. Plain and simple. They will tell you otherwise. We prove, last, um, last night we spoke about the liver producing sodium bicarbonate and sodium bicarbonate is used to cause the, the blood to be alkaline and so that it takes the pressure off the kidney. We saw that in dialysis they use sodium bicarbonate and electrolytes with the potassium, the magnesium and so on, the calcium in the machine, run your blood through it, then put it back in your body. So. Your food helps to produce these things. So you can save yourself from going down that road. And if you are at that place, you can come out of that place by changing in your lifestyle. Amen. So, are you willing to keep on the coat that you now have, or are you willing to take it off by looking at what God is going to propose to you? <laughs> right. In regard to the matter of prayer for the sick, many confusing ideas are advanced. One says, he who has been prayed for must walk out in faith, giving God the glory and making use of no remedies. If he is at a health institute, he should leave it at once. I know that these ideas are wrong, and that if accepted, they would lead to many evils. So in other words, don't just pray and do nothing. I've always heard God help those who help themselves. And there's truth in it. So don't, I remember the children of Israel leaving from um, Babylon under Ezra. And they prayed and asked God for guidance, for protection. But yet still Ezra said, arm yourself with swords. And, and he put them in different range while marching. I can remember Jacob prayed and asked God to deliver him from Esau. But yet still Jacob did some strategy to preserve his family life. But yet still he prayed. So, praying is good. And acting while praying does not say you do not have faith. Amen. Amen. It's prudence. It's not lack of faith. You're going to see. On the other hand, I do not wish to say anything that might be interpreted to mean a lack of belief in the efficacy of prayer. The path of faith lies close beside the path of presumption. It is no denial of faith to use rational remedies judiciously. Water, air, sunshine, these are God's healing agency. So she's saying plainly that it's not a sin for you to pray 
and then move out and do something that is still within God's plan and within God's will for your life. Amen. God told David, you're not going to build me a temple. Did David sit down? No. no. David made preparation for his child to build a temple. So if you are going to the doctor and the doctor tells you you have a problem and he's giving you medication, nothing's wrong with that. But also, you got God premise will and you got God ideal will. Strive for the ideal. Always look for a higher ground. We sing these songs and we're still on low ground. The use of certain herbs that the Lord has made to grow for the good of man is in harmony with the exercise of faith. Right. No, that's fine. Right. So, as you can see here, um, this is actually saying a very acidic. Okay? The body, well, the blood pH must always be neutral. 7.5. 7 7.4, 7.5. However, we still need a bit of acid food in our bodies. Because if it's too alkaline, it still will lead you to disease. And if it's too acidic, it still will lead you to disease. So God wants you to be in the Balance. middle. Balance. So oh, what you see here now, all animal food, every single one of them, acidic. Some more than the others. So the, when you try to make a lifestyle change, the first thing you need to get rid of is all red meat and shellfish. Well, we are Adventists, we shouldn't be eating shellfish in the first place. But some of us do. All do I know that the Bible says there are some people who hide and eat the rat and some people who hide and eat the swine. Right, Pastor? Yeah. The scripture says it in Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And there were Jews. So if it happened then, I'm sure it's happening now. Because I know people who, as I said before, Adventists and have big farm. So, the first step you, need to remove, step you need to take is remove all of this. As a matter of fact, this little one here, the lobster shellfish, more dangerous than even the pig. It's high in cholesterol. Crab, shellfish, crustaceans, high in cholesterol. Knock you off your feet before you know it. But if you look, notice between each square, there is a little green arrow. So the green arrow is actually pointing you to the direction that you should be going. So you see here, it moves from the red meat and the shellfish to poultry and fish, which is way, way better, but it's still acid. So, that's a good change. So, make a gradual change. I'm not saying drop out everything all at once. My sister dropped everything all at once, bam. I drop everything all at once, bam. You're not me. And th there are some people, when they, once they become a Christian, they never backslide. Yeah. They never do anything wrong. They walk faithful all the way with God. Yeah. And then you have some, they drop, and they get up, and they drop, and they get up, and they still make it. The whole point is your direction that you're going must always follow the, the green arrow. That is the important part. So you make the change from very acidic to acid, then to low acid. So whenever I do a plan, I always remove all of this and this and leave this. So as a person starts to eat, and incorporate more of this as their protein. So this would be just probably about two times a week or three times the most, as in the fish, and incorporate more, because remember, fish, all meat product is lacking in one important thing, fiber. Mm -hmm. So the quickest way to get colon ca cancer, keep eating, keep eating meat. So, Best thing to do, start using this and more of this. 
And when you mix the complete two of them together, this will compensate with the, the lack of fiber for that. And this gives you better, um, more beneficial um, nutrients than this and all of that. Because it's rich in the omega-3 and it helps with the brain. So it's better. So you have to source this from good place. Don't buy any farm fish. Don't buy any farm fish. So if you know seaside, go to the seaside or pay the little extra in the supermarket. But don't. So this is what I'm showing you is what I would refer to as a transitional plan. So for somebody who's trying to make a change to recover their health. For, this is not for me, this is not for my wife, this is not for my sister, this, this, this is not for my family. But this is for somebody who is a meat eater and trying to make a transition, you do it gradually. It says overcome evil with good. Little by little. God says I'm going to bless you little by little. So you take one step at a time. And God is with you. So it shows now, coming down to the bottom, milk and whole fat milk and skim milk or non-fat milk and then you have the soy just plant-based beverages because they're not milk plant-based beverages that people use as a substitute the almond, the coconut, the cashew any one that they, 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 they make sometimes you can get the grain ones like the amaran all in a mix up together the oatmeal and all those mix up together and as you see again, this is the animal, this is the animal, and this is the plant. So you see the difference, the gradual change from acid, from very acidic to less acid. So this is whole milk. Whole milk is more harmful than non-fat milk. But the non-fat milk still have a lot of things in it that can keep the cholesterol up the same way. Kissing it, all those things are still in it. The way they're still in it. So that's the best change and the best step to take. And then he goes down to the bottom showing you the... Can I go up a little bit? No? Right. Showing you the, the, the bottom. So that would be low, like this. You would have that color. And then this would have this. So it's showing you that the butter and the margarine are low acid. And the, in the LGY writing, she says, butter is less harmful when it's not cooked. Because the molecule doesn't change. And so it's less harmful. However, she also points out that a time is coming when you will need to stop partake of it. And I believe that time has come. Amen. You have mad cow disease. Mm -hmm. And all those other diseases. So when you see the animal kingdom is being afflicted more and more, then you know you need to make some changes. Yes. So what you find here, you substitute the animal fats with the plant fats. Olive oil, coconut oil, the red palm oil, very good for you. If you're cooking, coconut oil and the red palm oil because they don't break down easily and you use the olive oil and your salad dressing and if you some people go the extreme and don't use any at all as long as your food is still appetizing to you and if you serve it into somebody's appetizing as well so what this is saying as you follow right here as you follow the green line it will help you to make give your, your body the opportunity to increase its healing potential. So as you see up here, you have the curd cheese, and then you have the low-fat cottage cheese, and then you have the avocado, and the vegan coconut yogurt, or soy yogurt, or then you have the tofu. So you keep following, keep making the changes. The further you go away from the animal product, you're giving yourself a fighting chance. Amen. So what you see here is every animal product puts you in a place where you, your body will become diseased. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So if the blood is acidic, 
the likelihood is that the flesh is going to become acidic because the blood feeds, feeds the flesh. The flesh is made up of cells. Follow so far? Amen. So when you make that step from very acidic to low acidic to alkaline, you're giving yourself a fighting chance to overcome your illness. Any illness, whether it be mental illness or physical illness or emotional illness. Because it is the food that triggers, remember we showed it last night, triggers hormone and the hormone triggers your behavior. Let's take for example women. Most women get very irritable around the time of their cycle. It's not an excuse for you to be irritable, <laughs> but it, it does happen. True? Yes. So it shows you that hormone has a great effect upon the body. So you need to make sure that you eat foods that will give you a favorable position mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, and physically. So then you go down, you see the sweets, there's pastries, and then you have the, the, the grains. These are healthy grains, but they're low acid. So if you notice, some plant-based foods have acid. So you find the beans and the grains. So beans and grains are normally acidic, which is what is low acid. And it, what it does is balance off the alkalinity of the fruits and the vegetables. So you need to incorporate them in your diet as well. However, within the time that we are now living, you have to realize that certain grains today are very offending in your eating lifestyle. Yes. Like the whole wheat. God gave us permission to eat them. But the men of today who own this industry are insidious and they have stopped at nothing, nothing to disease your body so that they can sell you some drugs. It's, they, they, they genetically modified most of the grains. The only ones that are not so genetically modified are the Asian grains that are not really grains, they cause pseudo grains, like the millet and the amaranth and those things. And the, the quinoa. So those are the ones that are not so um, readily messed up. Then you have the sweets, let me show you the arrow. So if you have a, 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 a sweet tooth, like for example, Fred and I stopping off at um, Whole Food today, and we bought some carob, um, chocolate carob with nuts and grains in it. Delicious, wasn't it, friend? I took it home, gave my niece, she loved it. And all it, all it had was carob and the sesame seeds and the different seeds in it and a bit of honey as sweetener. That's it. And it had some herbs in it as well. Like I thought it had kelp in it and something else. It was lovely. Very delicious as well. So you can switch those with your molasses, your maple syrup. Maple syrup is very alkaline. Maple syrup is, is a remedy with baking soda for cancer treatment. Yes? yes. Maple syrup and baking soda mixed together. People use it for their cancer and get over it. Because it's alkaline. And because the baking soda will kill cancer, is cells that are infected. With, 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 with bacteria and other fungi. And the maple syrup and the baking soda work together. The cancer cells love the sugar, the sweetness. Yeah. And so the, it's a trap. Mm -hmm. You set him up to take the baking soda, but the, why to take the arm? You set him up to take the baking soda by taking the maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> Right, next, next slide please. So on this slide you now you have the first step in the protocol. So what I do is show you just now why you need to make those changes. Now here is a change. Here are the changes you, you, you will make. The first step in the protocol is called a detox. This you will do depending on your situation. A minimum of three days and maximum of ten days. And while you, while you do this during your maintenance stage, which is the fourth stage, you have what is, what is called an intermittent stage where every 
week you set aside one day where you just do juicing. So you'd repeat this one day every week after you've gone through the actual process after three days or the ten days, depending on what crisis you're trying to overcome. Follow? So what you have here are the different fruits and vegetables, the cruciferous vegetables. So you got the lemon, you got the cucumber, you got the grapefruit. I'm not seeing grapefruit. Yeah. 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 Oh, I see grapefruit, man. Especially in Jamaica. Oh, and the black grapes with seeds and the noni that is beautiful it, it tastes horrible but it is very good who knows stinking though I love it it stink but it's sweet it's good I, I, I don't I don't want to put the two of them together when you break it it's Oh my goodness, but when you taste it, Pastor, oh my goodness, you don't want it to finish. Yeah, very nice, very, very nice. And then you have on the banana, if you notice the banana is a bit speckled here, if you can see it. Because when you go to the supermarket and you see those yellow bananas, isn't that right? No. It's a gas, the rice Yes, it's something they do to, them to get them to that state. So you have to wait for it to be beneficial to you. Wait till they get to this stage. As a matter of fact, especially if you're trying to get over cancer, when a banana is speckled, that's the best time to eat it. Because it has a property, don't remember the name at the moment, that is anti-cancer. It fights cancer. Proven. As a matter of fact, they're now using banana they're trying to make a job out of it for HIV. Yeah. Just go and Google banana, banana kill HIV. And you see what you, you, you get. So, this is telling me something. That there's a lot of things that, that they have not researched. But the ones that they're researching, they realize it can kill cancer. Can kill this, can kill that, can kill that. But this just let me jump to the conclusion that the whole nature can kill everything you just have to know how to use it the herbs for the healing of the nation then you got the pomegranate okay pomegranate is now being used for hiv just type in pomegranate and you get a whole study on it it prevents the cell from replicating just type in and I get a whole study on it. Papa, good for digestion. The mango, mango now. The leaves of the mango can be eaten, can, can be used. The green mango, they use it in Indian cooking. They call it chana. No, 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 chop. They use it to make chutney, but the green mango powder, they call it chana. And then you, the, lead, the bark of the mango tree can be used to make tea. The, the, leaf, the leaves, yeah. The, the guava, the avocado, the seed of the avocado is now being used for eating. Yeah. 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 If you see some of these Asian people, they, they, they don't let nothing go to waste. And, these, and, and the Africans. And, and you got all the berries. Blueberry is very, very good. And you got the tamarind, the peach, the pineapple, and all the fruits. You can combine them with in, in juicing. The only time you combine fruits and vegetables is if you juice it. That's the only time you combine fruits and vegetables. Only in juicing, never in eating. But in juicing is fine. And then you have the different, the, the carrots, the asparagus, the celery, the arugula, or the rockets, whichever one you call it here. The onions, the lettuce. I love this one, but it's very expensive. Artichoke. The fennel. That's some nice flavor too. The sweet potato, the yams. And let's clear up something. Because um, we're talking about it today, for the night. There's a difference between hybrid and genetically modified food. I gave an example of um, what hybrid is. Let me see if I. Well, 
what did I say here? I, I, I don't even remember. Sometimes, sometimes God puts some stuff in your mouth and explain and it's beautiful and then you just can't remember it. You're saying something about one doesn't change the, mole the molecule. Right, right. So, one changes the molecule of the food and one only upgrades the taste and the look of the food. So the hybrid only upgrades the look and the taste, whereas the other one changes the molecule. And once the molecule of the food is changed, it can be harmful to you. So the hybrid foods, though they say broccoli is hybrid, you can still enjoy your broccoli. Because no one went, take for example, Edward, if I'm correct in his name, Edward Jenner, who discovered about beans and, 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 and practiced, he was a monk, and he's, um, what's his name? Manta, Manta, Manta. Don't remember his name. Jenner Manta or something of the sort. He, 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 he discovered about the beans and he ran his test. That's how he found out about the genes and all those things. And all he did was, like, he would t take this crop and he removed the, the ones that he didn't need and then he take the best ones and then form another crop and then from that one he take take the best from that crop and throw away the one that he didn't need until he get the, the, the right taste that he's looking for and the right look. And that's what hybrid basically is. <coughs> Take for example, you end up a sour orange into a sweet, sweet orange tree. Yeah. And you start to bear a different fruit. Different taste in orange. That's what hybrid really is. It doesn't change any. Okay. God take the Gentiles and engraft them into the family of Israel. Nothing changed. It's just to improve the quality of the product. So hybrid, you can eat hybrid. Some people still, uh, see, I don't follow every news. It's not even John Pond that I dance to. I read and source my own information, study the Word of God, match it to the Word of God, because the Word of God will help me to understand the process of hybrid. We see it in the Bible. God approves it, so it's fine. It's a way of planting a way of getting the best, best that you're looking for out of your, out of your crop. <clears throat> but genetically modifying, that's when you're playing God because you're actually taking a plant and a bacteria or two plants from different species and mix together, like a peach and a mango. Because they do that. That's, I don't want none of that. That's where you have a problem. So those are, you can use in your juicing, and then you've got some herbs here, yeah. the chamomile, the fever grass, the ginger, the licorice, the burdock, the slipper M. You can incorporate those in your, in your juicing as well. Because the, the slipper M will help to coat the, the, the digestive system. So if you're a person troubling with leaky gut, you, you start to use that a little bit more. And then it shows you down here, incorporate um, some of the different spices, like the garlic and the clove. Well, this is an old, I need to take clove out. So don't quote me on clove. And the reason, as light keep coming to me, I remove things that I don't, that I used to use. So clove and cinnamon I used to use, I don't use them anymore. Why? Because I read this spirit of prophecy. Do not use clove and cinnamon. Don't question it. It's God's servant, that's good enough for me. And not only that, other people that I've given it to, it irritates the stomach. And the clove. It irritates the stomach. But you can, if you take a powder and say, maybe, maybe, I'm just saying, maybe if you use soak it in the water and use the water, it won't be that harsh on you. But I don't use it. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not saying no, but for me, I don't use it anymore. And I don't recommend it anymore to um, people. Right? The ginger, I still do recommend, because ginger, she writes in her writing, she says plainly, pepper, cinnamon, clove, don't use, but ginger, I still use. So, the servant of the Lord gives us advice, I choose to take it, and I choose to run with those things. But as I say, the clove is very potent. And the only time, take for example pepper, the only time I would use pepper, the only, only time, is if I have nothing else. Or the only time I might use these, 
If, if I have nothing else and I've given the person everything and I've prayed and the person needs help and I know that that can help because they have potent antiviral and anti-cancer properties in them, that's the only time. Yeah, that's the only, only time I, I, I would use them. We, we, question, we, we have a question session, guys. Yeah, yes, um, okay. yes, afterwards. So just stick up any question, please. So then it goes over here. During the juicing section, you are only allowed, during the three to 10 days, to use all the fruits, all the vegetables, and the teas, and the spices that would be recommended in the list. And then you have some nuts up here. You exclude every nuts, every grain, every seed, ever been, you wouldn't use those. And the reason behind that, during the juicing section, you're trying to get rid of uric acid. All the acid that, 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 that builds up in the body. So you're trying to alkaline the body. So if you're adding the beans, remember bean is low. So you're trying to get rid of off. Just for the period of the three to 10 days, you would remove all those from your, from your diet. And then along with all these um, red foods, which you, you will see um, later. Next slide, please. Then you have step two in the plan, which is eliminated, el elimination, so you eliminate foods. Now, the main offending foods in today's society is fake carbohydrate. And the fake carbohydrate comes from the processed flour. And the, even the whole wheat itself because when you mill a flour, it comes out a bit slightly yellow, right? But what they do, they bleach the flour. And by bleaching the flour, it changes the molecule of the flour. And when you eat it, it harms the stomach and gives you leaky gut. Very, 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 very dangerous. So the main thing you have to remove from your diet is flour. I Pasta, I used to eat bread Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, morning, afternoon, and evening. If I eat anything and I don't eat a piece of bread, I don't think I eat anything. Mm -hmm, it's true, man. I love bread. I love bread. I love bread. But oh, bread is the best. I have to give it up. Yeah. My, my tummy was like this. Serious? And the moment I stop eating it, and, and miss, a, miss a few meals and drink some buckwheat flour, turn into porridge, I ease the pain. I used to get headaches. Oh, I, don't, I don't get headaches. But when I spent five, five months last year here, like I said, my sister's husband is a chef, and I was eating the, the food, the bread as it comes out of the oven. So that was even worse. So the yeast in it is still active. So I just opened up my gut and it swelled the gut. <laughs> no, serious. So that's why beer, people who drink beer are big men. Because the yeast in it caused the gut to swell. So I had to give it up. I wouldn't give it up. The gut gone, the headache gone. As simple as that. So sometimes it's just some removing a simple thing. There was one thing I, I, I heard watched a documentary, a little girl had a cancer under her eye and the doctors tried to do everything and nobody knew what to do. They wanted to do surgery and the mom said no. And they took him to what is known as a functional medicine doctor. Functional medicine doctor used plant-based food to solve problems. And he said, just remove flour for a while and see. They did it, went away. Um. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes it's just a simple little thing you need to remove from your diet. Yeah. And you, you're getting gassy. Remove the flow. <laughs> what do you prefer? The taste or your life? <laughs> and then you see it shows you again the other, other stuff that you need to remove. Soy. So, other stuff we need to remove, soy. So let me explain. Remember, <clears throat> I will always stand up for God's word. And defend the Bible and the writings of Ellen G. White. And I said it before, God said he's going to give people 
the knowledge to make things so that people can have foods to eat that are not able. But we must bear in mind, God give us a Sabbath. Is there a counterfeit Sabbath? Yes. yes. God give us Christianity and you got a whole other counterfeit religion. So the same way how God give us the Sabbath and their counterfeits are about, same way when God raised up men to create the first cereal, you have all the evil cereals them now, laced with all the poisonous stuff that's in them. Because the devil wants to destroy everybody, but especially God's people. And so even the healthful food, because soy is one of the healthiest food you can find on the earth, if it is not genetically modified. And the devils tempt Monsanto, the owner of it, and they went and created this genetically modified product, and now it's in everything, you can't escape it. But there are still companies out there who do not use them to make their product. So do not let your criteria be another individual's criteria and say, oh, you're eating so How can you say you're this and you're that and you're using soy? No. God had said he would allow men to make these things for the benefit of people. And there are products out there that are still helpful. So if you choose not to eat it at all, that's your choice. Don't not those who choose to use the non-GMO products. I wanted to clear that up. So you have the cheese. Ellen White, in her writing, you can read it in Constance and Diet Food, cheese should never be introduced into the body. Never. The body does not know what to do with it. No, no that, that's nuts. I make a fantastic cheese sauce mm -hmm. at home. And I make macaroni and cheese. And you'll never know that it's not cheese. It tastes like cheese, smells like cheese, looks like cheese, but it's not cheese. It is very, very you, you just, just go on the internet and type in vegan cheese sauce and you get a whole list until you find one and you can perfect it to your own. So you just, but to make changes in your life, you have to actively get up and do something. Don't wait for people to spoon feed you. Then it goes on, shows you the meats that are here. It says flesh foods you should avoid. So the red meat, the pork, the lamb, the sheep, the goat, all of them. You have to cut them out. If you're looking to recover. If you just want to live and eat and drink and be merry, you can live and live. But if you're trying to recover from an illness, you have to get them out. Mm. Amen. In Jamaica, I have people come to me and pay me $45,000 to do plans. And they don't know one thing that I tell them to do. <laughs> or they might do a little part of it, and then they just stop. The most faithful people that I have, that I'm assisting, are those who don't pay me. The ones who pay me, they tell me, I'm a stubborn person. They tell me, they tell me from, from the get-go. And they still give me the money. And they don't do one thing. I'm serious. And you have some who try to help for free, and they throw it back in your face, and they go out and pay for something, and they still don't get help. Then it shows you at this stage in the in, in, in the second in the eliminated stage, you can keep you can start to bring back some of the nuts, but it all depends on what you're trying to overcome. So if it's allergies you would stay off the nuts a little bit longer. You're allergic to nuts and all those stuff. You stay off them a little bit longer, but you can eventually introduce them into your diet. Because the only reason the body is allergic to nuts is because you have the leaky gut. 
and then, and what's that simple saying that the, go, the nuts when you eat it is not actually going into the, 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 the stomach and broken down properly. It's partially digested and the partially digested food slip into your gut. Then the immune system see a partially digested amino acid and it attacks the amino acid. But because you're used to eating nuts throughout your lifetime, the nut you are what you eat, the nuts make up your flesh and so it will see, see similar protein sequence in the tissues of your flesh. And after it, it attacks the broken down, the partially digested um, amino acid, it also attacks your flesh. But it's not attacking your flesh, it's doing its job to get rid of what this, the brain told it to get rid of, which is a sequence of protein that it sees as being dangerous. But because it is in the flesh as well, because you have been eating nuts throughout your life, it becomes a part of your flesh. Whatever food you eat, it leaves a print on your body. And the tissue of your body. So if you eat pig, it's gonna and the tissue of your body. So you're setting yourself when you, you eat your food, you're sowing seeds of fruitfulness or seeds of disease in your body. Then it shows you the fish that you can keep. The salmon, black, which is wild salmon if you can afford it, the anchovy, the cod. But stay away from tuna and mackerel. <coughs> if you want to know why, just go to Google, type in Dr. Walter Vade, who is a zoologist, and he will tell you exactly why you shouldn't eat it. One, God says anything that has scale, eat it. And you will, they will tell you, oh, no, man, mackerel and tuna have scale. They got a thin, no, you have true scale, or scales that you can look at, see, peel off and touch. That's not scale. It's not a true scale. And if it doesn't have a true scale also, it is a bottom feeder. It's on the lower atrophy level of the food chain. And so it's more toxic. Tuna and mackerel. And Walter Vade is one of the, as Pastor said the other night, the best scientist in our institution. And no evolution person can stand in front of him when he speaks. He silences them using the Bible, come out with some stuff from the Bible and from science and from history and put them to shame. And he himself was an atheist. But a man whose heart has been won by Christ. Then it shows you other stuff that we can um, remove from this. So basically what I'm showing you is the steps that I will take somebody through that is sick. And as you're listening, you can make your notes and you can go ahead and build from there. Because how I learn all these things? I read, I read, I read, I read, and I listen, I listen, I listen. And I go and I sit and God show me step by step. If I show you an old plan of mine compared to this, you see the vast difference. A step. Do not... Wait to do something great. Do what you can do now, and you'll get to do something great eventually. But most of us want to sit down and wait to do something great. You'll never do anything. And this is the third step, which is called the rectifying state. Now, the rectifying state deal with all the supplements that you'll be taking. You can't see it there all the supplements, but I'm gonna show you the pictures with better um, writing there. So here it shows you all the unhealthy gut manifestation. All the unhealthy gut manifestations would be stuff like Alzheimer's disease, Crohn's disease, depression. All those things start from the gut. Because they tell you when you have depression, you have an imbalance in the neurotransmitters. What make neur neurotransmitters? Serotonin is a neurotransmitter. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter. They made from your food. They made in the stomach. And they transfer message to the brain for the brain to make them also in the brain. So everything starts here. If you can control this and keep it healthy, you can control disease in any part of your body. And Ellen White says it. She says that if any part of your body is sick, the first place you go. Paraphrasing. 
That's where the disease starts. There's a young man in my church. Ran away to England. And I came up to see him. And he's walking. And he talks very slowly. So the first time I saw him, I said, something wrong. So I knew, first of all, I knew that he had leaky gut. So I said it to his wife, and the wife said, yes, he has leaky gut. But I didn't know what he was suffering from. But I knew he had leaky gut because of his slurred speech and his movement and all those stuff. So um, recently his wife told me that he's been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And I want to help him, so I went online and did some research. And it was just so easy, God showed me the answer of causing. Just like that. And you have all these learned men and women. I, I don't have no. I am Marvin, that's it. There's no PhD, bachelor's science, nothing. Just Marvin, a servant of God, full stop. Yeah. And I understand and know what causes and what to do to cure it. I've never cured anyone with it, but I know that if I give them what God has shown me, they will recover. Because God showed me the underlying cause just by reading researches and understand. So, for example, on this one, it's made up for the young man. And the first, the first in my um, rectifying protocol, I look at certain areas which one is to look at the cell membrane. Before you can get sick, the cell must be infected. Yeah. Or the cell must be affected by something. So you have to strengthen the cell membrane integrity, which is the outside of the cell. The door, if the door is like I can't come through. So you have to protect the cell membrane. The things that protect the cell membrane are fats. Cholesterol is part of it, but cholesterol must come from your own body not with added food. And then the, the setting that comes from like soy or sunflower if you don't want to use the soy because they fill with phospholipids that help to strengthen the cell membrane. Coconut oil, medium chain triglyc triglycerides. Then you have the hemp seed oil, the flax seed oil. As I told you, mix them together and take two tablespoons three times a day if you have that condition. One person gave it to her husband, Alzheimer, and he recovered. All she gave him was coconut. This is not, it's a story that came on TV. Yes. A, a story that you can read in the report of health. All she gave him was coconut oil. And he recovered. <clears throat> so that's the first thing I'll do. Make up an eye supplement so that they can get their fats in, healthy fats, to protect the cell membrane. Second thing, I make, so basically this is generic. I would do this for everybody. The only thing I would do is probably add two different supplements for a different person based on their specific condition. So in this, the only thing that is different in this one is the, the product that I formulated which, with, with God's help. Which, which deals specifically with correcting the cause of Parkinson. So, okay. let me read it out to you. So, yeah, this is a better picture on my phone. Really. So. So what you find, how did I came to the conclusion of what caused Parkinson? I went to the book, Mind, Character and Personality, <coughs> volume 2, page 385. That's where I went to. Mind, Character and Personality, volume 2, page 385. And it says, in order for the other parts of the system to be healthy, the brain must be healthy. And in order for the brain to be healthy, the blood must be pure. And in order for the brain to be pure, for the blood to be pure, the digestive system that it brings in the food has to be provided good food. Because your blood is made from the food that you eat. So do you see the connection of the stomach right there? Yes. Okay, then I went to another passage 
to make sure that I'm not just making up stuff in my head. Sometimes we often do that and from our, from our own. That's why you get different churches. <laughs> yeah, you get one scripture and you make a, a sermon and I make a church. So I want to make sure that we are two or three together, line up a line, line, up a line precepts and precepts. So then I follow another passage. Indulgence of appetite is the greatest cause yeah. of physical and mental debility. What debility? Parkinson is seen as a mental problem, but it is not a mental problem. And it says, indulgence of the appetite is the cause of the mental situation. And lies at the foundation of the feebleness which is apparent everywhere. Testimonies, volume 3, page 487. God will have all the answers. You just have to ask God and He will lead you to the right place. So then, what are the ingredients in it? The ingredients in it, let me read them out to you. So you might know somebody. Bacopa maniria. Maniri, which is B A C O P A, you can just use that word, or M O N N I E R I. The purpose of this, it inhibits what is called aggregation of alpha synuclein. Now, alpha synuclein is a protein that is in the stomach. When those proteins come together, aggregation ends coming together, it causes the brain to start kill certain cells. Why? Because the stomach and the brain are connected through a vein. And when they do that, it sends a signal and the, and the brain starts to die. So if you start to prevent and reverse the aggregation of these proteins with the Bacopa and cat's claw, so for example, Parkinson's people shake a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cat's claw, taking cat's claw, increase motor symptoms by reducing the accumulation of this same protein. These things have been tested, tried, and proven on other creatures. And if it works on an animal, it will work on a human being. And you have people who take them. Take for example, one of the things they take is dopamine. But when you keep taking dopamine, you know what they have to do when you keep taking dopamine? Each time, dopamine is like, it comes like marijuana. Because each time you smoke marijuana, the high that you get the first time is not the same high you get. Because it what happened? It decreases the receptors in the brain that will latch on to the cannabis. So each time you take dopamine, it decreases the dopamine receptor in your brain. So the first time you take it, you start talking better, you start walking better. But then they have to increase how much you take. Every time you take it, they have to increase it. Google it and see from nine. Every time you take it, they have to increase it. Until eventually, all the receptors in your brain die as a result of you taking the dopamine. But there are plant based that have what is called L-dopamine, which they call Lova Dopa. And when you take it, it causes the brain to be able to make its own dopamine, come back with the, 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 the arm. Because you, you, you're, you're attacking the underlying problem. So let me take you to... Right. So the next slide... The next slide gives you the final step. It shows you maintenance of your lifestyle. Combining everything into one. It says it gives you a specific time. You must have a specific time for breakfast and a specific time for lunch. And I, on this plan, I, if you're trying to recover from illness, always choose two meals a day. Because the, the thing that takes most energy from your body is digestion. And to, for you to heal, it requires energy. So if you keep using too much energy, then you're going to delay your progress. So two meals, trying to recover from illness, two meals always best. So if you do feel hungry at the last stage, when you normally eat, just drink some, some vegetable juice or some fruit juice and relax. So it shows you, you start the day. 
worship. You skip that, you're in trouble. The Bible says, I am God who forgives your sin and heals your disease. I can't heal anybody. Peter walked and his shadow went over people. You think Peter did it? Peter lived a godly life and God used Peter. It is God who did it. As a matter of fact, Peter healed the man at, at the gate. And he said, why look at us? Standing gates, look at us. As if we did with our power. The same Jesus Christ who killed. It's him who did it. So I can't take any credit. That is because I give you a plan. You recover. No. It plays a part, yes. It's part and parcel. But ultimately, it is God. So you have to involve worship. Exercise. We spoke about that already. Increase the, your, your energy. So if your energy is increased, then your potential of healing is increased. Water. No one can live without water. This earth cannot exist without water. The, water, the earth, approximately 65 to 70% water. The human body, the same. And within, remember on the juicing part, they said you're going to do an intermittent fasting every week, once a week. So you set aside a day, every week, where you do a fasting, a juice fast. So remember, please, let me see that who's going to join in the juice fast tomorrow. Wow, pastor, look around, pastor. That's lovely. So we're doing a juice fast tomorrow from the morning straight to the evening. Nobody cheating now. All right? No bun and cheese, no pizza, no chicken, no nothing, just juice. All right, Kerry Kerry? You're trying to? <laughs> and then, this is the important part. I want to get through this quickly. So we have here the fruits. So always start your morning with a carbohydrate punch. No, food. Fruits. So you can start with a minimum of three fruits or five fruits. So when I say three fruits, I, mean, I don't mean three oranges. I mean like a mango, a banana, and an orange. Three different fruits. Just an, just an example. And berries. Strawberries, blackberries, blueberry, raspberry. That's what I miss about England. I could just walk on the street and pick berries. Serious. I live in a place called Walton Store. Just walk in the bush, pure berries. Blackberries and raspberries. Pure berries. And it was, I wasn't living in the country, it's a city. But there's a lot of berry on this. Because it's wild. Berries are wild fruit. All the berries are wild fruit. And then you have the nuts and the grains. Choose a gluten-free grain or a grain that is um, as I mentioned, the old, the millet, the buckwheat. You can cook some yourself. Buckwheat is beautiful. Try it. It is a bar some today. So Terry's gonna try it and then she will come and tell you, right? <laughs> I'll make some buck, about some buckwheat and chickpea flour. Chickpea flour make a nice omelet. You yeah, chick omelet. Just get the chickpea flour. They, they call it God, God butter. Yeah, but I didn't know they had the flour. Yes, and just put some water, blend it out into your blender so you get a bit light, fluffy, and just pour it out in, with grease the pan with a bit of oil and just pour it out and then put your filling inside, flip it. Tastes eggy. As a matter of fact, when you cook the peas, the water of the peas, the chickpeas, mm -hmm. it is used, they call it aquafaba. And it is used to make meringue pie. It looks everything that eggs, eggs can be can be used for. It can be used to do this exact same thing. Mm -hmm. So it shows you start to incorporate about thirty gram, thirty to forty gram of thirty to fifty grams of cereals with your different nuts. A handful, as um, Sister Dana pointed out the other day, you, you could you could take incorporate all your nuts in the morning if you want. A handful of them, almond, walnut, and then some seeds. And then you have your, all your different seeds the flax seed, and the chia seed, and the pumpkin seed. And the, these seeds are liquid, but they're powerful. Yeah. Yeah, liquid, but with talawa. Yeah. Yeah. They have more nutrients than the big stuff. The flax, all over the seed, this es especially sesame seed. And then you have the different um, breads. Some Skippy butter, peanut butter. Skippy is a good brand. It doesn't have all them foolishness in it. 
and then it shows you the, the, the beverages that you could incorporate, the coconut milk, the almond, and then the black strap molasses, you introduce those. Then for, for dinner, you'd have either a salad or a salad plus some cooked vegetables with your meal. So, and these are the, food, the foods that you would actually use to, to help you. The broccoli, because the, remember, these are all the cruciferous vegetables, and they pack a great punch when it comes to detoxifying the body. But you don't have to live on them alone. There are other vegetables. Enjoy all the vegetables that you can afford. And the onions and the different um, the pumpkin and the squash and the courgettes or zucchini as you call them. And the different cauliflower, sweet potato. Dashi, I love dashi. Nice green and gummy. Nice. And a different, and your salmon, incorporate that. But in the evening, do not have a third meal. At first, it would be a great struggle, because it is still a struggle for me. But you eventually, you get it. When you feel hungry, just no juicing at that time. So what you see now, just, you can start right off your stuff. What you, Ignite is one of the products product that I um, found by God's grace. And what it does, Ignite is to help you to lower your fat. Okay, it has the ingredients. It helps you ignite the word means ignite your fat burning process. So it helps you ashwagandha, chase tree berries, kelp, milk thistle, gymnema silvestri, cream of tartar, barberry root. So barberry root deals with the liver, nettle root stop the estrogen from being converted, pumps the fat from being converted to estrogen, put you in trouble. We cause estrogen that um both hormone, the kelp deals with the thyroid, the milk thistle deals with the liver as well. And the um, chase berry deals with re regulating the progesterone and the estrogen. Ashwagandha gives you the cord cortisol. Gymnema helps you to hate sweet foods. It <laughs> takes away the, the, the sweetness from the food. So if, if you use it like chocolate, it's still going to start tasting insipid because it doesn't taste so sweet anymore. Viralize this. Let me see. Use this one for me. Viralized. The, the term viral, viral, viral means virus. Lice means to kill. As in viral, kill the virus. Lysis. So viralize uses for HIV. Black seed, which is Nigella sativa, and hisa. I only use these two. But throwing these in it gives us another kick because neem is good for the immune system. So while these are killing off the virus, and preventing them from replicating the immune system will boost. It works. I'm using it for somebody now. The person is fine. No symptoms at the moment. And I just bought another batch to send to my wife. Took it. I need to call the person to the call it. To give it to her. Because she's run out. So I bought her some more. She used to have all sorts of problems. When I saw her, she said, Marvin, I feel like I'm cured. I know she's not cured, no, because she needs to be on it full on for a minimum of six months. And this is things that I've studied, researched, and see where other people use it and get over. And it's not a secret, it is in papers, recorded journal. Skip. Then you have phytoprotein milkshake. So this is for someone who wants to lose weight. So this is a, a milkshake which you can use organic brown rice protein, organic pea protein, organic coconut milk, organic chia seed, organic flax seed, mesquite powder, nepal, which is tuna, organic apple powder, inulin powder, so all this, and stevia, which is a sweetener, and gum, gum arabic, all this will help you to increase your protein. I've not tasted this one yet, so I don't know, but I, based off ingredients that I know in the how they taste already, I should think it should be okay in terms of taste. I've not used it yet. Harmonies. This is to help with the prostate, the ashwagandha, the chase tree, the fenugreek, the nettle root, the boot, the sarsaparilla, the honey gold weed, the sarpometer, the ginger root, all increase um, your testosterone, which is the underlying cause of 
the low testosterone gives you the problem of swollen prostate gland or prostate cancer. Next. Then you have C complex. The C complex I add, which with, you have the spirulina, the kelp, the chlorella, the galera, the Irish marsh. They are rich in protein, rich in all vitamins and minerals. And at the same time, it gives you the opportunity to get the EPA and, the EPA, um, and DHA um, fish, fish, fish um, oils in your body without eating the fish. Yep. The rest of life, this is one of my favorite. This, because it says the life reflections in the blood, so this one cleans the blood. So this one can be used, and I'm just started using it for a, a guy, but he's not so um, full on in following. And, and when, when it's finished, he, he, he probably waits like a, a little period before he replenish, re replenish again. But this one can, can I, I believe, should re help you to recover from sickle cell. Sickle cell. Because sickle cell is the blood problem. So this will help you to make new blood cells. Yes. Remember, you got yellow dot. Yellow dot is pure iron. You got burdock, that's pure iron. You got sarsaparilla, that's pure iron. That's three of the most potent iron nutrients you can find on the earth. Burdock, yellow dot, sarsaparilla. You have anemia, you take those, you don't have to worry about anemia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you have full spectrum enzymes. The full spectrum enzymes. Um, is papaya, amla, bee pollen, and napalcactus. Amla is not necessarily an enzyme, but it helps to the body to, 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 to work better when it comes to digesting proteins. But napalcactus, which is the same tuna we call in Jamaica, green papaya, and bee pollen. Bee pollen is one of the most potent um, food you can find. The little flowers that they pollen that they collect is potent, 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 potent. Earth Cure, now this is one I like as well. I've not used this myself, but I've given it parts of it to a, 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 a four-year-old child, which is who suffers, suffers with um, ADHD, and um, couldn't, couldn't say nothing. Now he's saying bye. He said bye to me, and, if, and I said, and if I say never said that, you start go to school now and you start to, you know, little, 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 little actions. So I'm praying and praying, and I need to replenish them with this stuff as well. So this diatomaceous earth, sulfur, bentonite clay. Diatomaceous earth kills bacteria and viruses. Same goes the bentonite clay. Sulfur helps to detoxify the body. All the cells in your body have sulfur. But it's, this is what I use specifically for correcting leaky gut and replenishing what is called a microbiota meaning the bacteria in your gut, the bacteria family, to bring them back to the right level. If John should be five feet tall and Timmy should be only three feet tall, but Timmy end up all growing John, then I correct that with these. So they're in the right proportion, the right height. So those are what you, you have, they sell, they sell you a lot of um, probiotics, right? That, those are what you call prebiotics. So it's what actually feed your bacteria to grow properly. And that, that, that's what I just explained to you with, with, with the, um, the Parkinson's disease. The Barcopa, the Cascla, the Elucha. Elucha is just simple, um, sadly when Jensen, they've changed the name, I don't know why they changed the name. Um, Buta Cola is very, very good. It helps the body to regenerate new brain cells, potent. A mucuna purins is a black, is a bean that looks like black bean, helps the body to get the, um, dopamine. And then the others, the rest of all, prevent um, strength by the blood brain barrier with that nothing crosses. And then the valerian root and the blue vervine and the fever few helps the nervous system. And then the rosemary and the turmeric helps the brain to increase um, dopamine as well as memory. And then this is the product that I use, the market oil. So the, the oil that I give away every night, um, that, that's the product and the, all the ingredients that is in the black seed oil, flax seed oil, hemp seed oil, borage oil, perinus seed oil, sunflower seed oil, lysithin, etchium, sage, rosemary, fennel, anise, frankincense, myrrh, clove, 
marjoram, oregano, thyme, juniper, lemongrass, citronella, which is similar to lemongrass, um, lam lam, lime, bergamot, grapefruit, patchouli, geranium, safflower, high oleic oil, red palm oil, coconut oil, and whenever I make it, the next time around, I'm gonna add DMSO. And DMSO will make it more potent to get, get into all the tissues of the body. And that should be the, the end with the snow. We have used the remedies I have, we have used the remedies I have mentioned in regard to, no, something must be at the top, no? Oh, we have, that, that's it? All right. We have used the remedies I have mentioned in regard to manner, to manner of labor. We certainly need to be wise as serpents and harmless as dogs. We might be very zealous, but it might be an unwise zeal and serve to hedge up our way. And then there is danger of being too circumscribed in our work as to do very little good. What I'm saying, this is basically saying, when Jesus healed somebody, Jesus would say, don't tell anybody. Yes. You've heard, you've heard that? Yes. And I would wonder, oh Jesus don't want nobody to know what saying he's somebody. You want everybody to know that you have God and praise you. But Jesus was wise as a serpent, harmless as a dog. Because if he tell everybody that people wouldn't like him, or come out and try to prevent him from doing it and hinder his work from going forward. So what we're doing here is it's important that we let the people know. But you have to do it wisely. Remember. The one dances. They want to tell the world about Jesus, but they have to do it secretly. Take out a piece of paper, and when they realize that the people is willing, willing they give it to them. Because what would happen? They kill them. Mm -hmm. Don't think they're afraid to kill us. That there's more than one way to skin up. Then after those cut off your head, they can do something, anything. So we have to move with wisdom when we are using God's remedy. Believe me, he said the simple remedies are less harmful than drugs and because of this they will want to stop you and pass up. If they are mean to stop you, they will stop you. Yeah. They stop that per se. Yeah. There's no one who's too powerful. Only God can be on your side for them not to do anything. Yeah. They yeah. jump in the oil and they couldn't do anything. They they try to kill Martin Luther and they couldn't do anything. Only God can be our defense. Thank you very much. Um, and we Found on nine o'clock. Any quick questions? Yes. Any quick question? I, uh, before, pass away or something.